Some of you are artists and don't even know it. You're constructing a huge mural of sorts and have no idea. The world that I live within, practice that I've held true to my heart for some time now, is that there is an art to failing. And to expand upon that, to bridge things together, I'd like to share a short story with you, if I may. There once was a man, and he was a straggler, a bum, if you will, traveling from city to city, and nevertheless, <clears throat> he arrived upon a small community. And within this community, there was a house. And every weekend, whenever they would set out their trash, he would pretty much go through the entire community, going through the trash and seeing what he could salvage just to make do, just to eat, right? Have something nourishing to uh, continue his journey in life. Nevertheless, in this one house, there was an old man. And he had long since lost his wife. And his children were off to college or off intending to their careers. Nevertheless, the man watched every single week around the same time, just like clockwork, he would come through the bum salvaging whatever he can in the trash and he noticed him. And he didn't take notice in order to call the cops or anything of that nature. He took notice to see exactly what time he would possibly be through. Because one evening that he came through and he was salvaging through the tra trash as he usually does, the man looked out and screamed to him. Naturally, he got startled and he thought to run, but the old man shouted out, no, 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 just come here. I wanna, I wanna give you something. I wanna feed you. I got some food inside. I'm not gonna call the cops or any of that. So nevertheless, he came inside the house. They sat down, they had dinner and discussed many different things. Over the course of the next couple weeks, the bum would always come by and make it a habit to knock on the door and see the old man and, of course, have their conversation and commence eating and discussing things of life. Nevertheless, as time went on, he got himself up. A couple years went by and he had a career in line and he thought it was due to what that old man shared with him. It was due to the lessons, the, the, the experiences in life that he had accumulated that he shared with him over those countless meetings. And he thought to go back and thank him, only to knock on a door and see that it was now occupied by another family. Nevertheless, they gave him a point of contact. He got in contact with them and nat naturally went out to try to go see the old man. Once he got there, he was sadly presented the news that the old man had passed away. And his family, the remaining children, recognized him only by virtue of what their father shared with him. That he was supporting, that he was feeding this scraggler, this drifter of sorts and the conversations that they would have and that he wasn't just anybody floating around. He was somebody who had promise, somebody who had a drive, somebody who had something in them to continue forward. And that's what he shared with the family. And the family said, you've come here to thank us, but we want to thank you. Because it meant a lot to our father because he too had went through a similar situation as yourself. Now, I share that story with you because I would like you to understand that there is an art to life as we go along. So as long as we choose to find a path, direct our path, as we so see fit, this takes a great deal of introspection, a great deal of challenging uh, constructive theories, beliefs, and things of that nature of, of tangible goods that can support that our life is of meaning. And sometimes we don't have those tangible results. We only have experiences. But see, that's a part of that mural. 
It's a part of that thing that you may never ever see in your entire existence. You may pass away and someone else, somewhere that you've touched or at one time had an influential relationship with, they took the seed and, and that seed was watered and nurtured throughout time and it, and it grew to what it became. And they went on forth and shared other things and they went on forth and shared things and they went on and so forth and so on and that's how that story goes. A great deal of us look around these days and say, what a mess we are in. But as of this mess, we should also ask ourselves, what is it we can make of it? We are addicted to all of this sensory success that we overlook sometimes the journey in itself. It's a difficult thing even for myself to this very day to continuously tell myself that, but nevertheless it is a part of the truth. Something that I hold true to heart. Because what is it of someone who's only learned in classrooms or learned in different lessons and things of that nature and not degrading that, that's great. They, they started something, they've got on to something and that's perfectly well, but who are they to speak to someone at a lower level like that? It just doesn't link up. It, it, there's a disconnect of source. You see, unless you have the experiences to share, unless you have the dedication to what it is you are after in life, regardless of who aligns themselves with it or not, it doesn't matter. You see, what I'm speaking of is resolve. It's something that you can't necessarily put your hands on, but it exists. It's real. It's got a pulse to it. It's thriving because it is the same thing that gives you the energy to continue forward, regardless of whatever you're seeing. Sometimes that mural, as I stated, you won't get to see. The unfortunate reality of life is that we come here and we go. And it's a simple fact of reality that none of us know exactly when that time is. And so it would be best to apply ourselves to direct intention, which aligns with our heart if we are ever to feel any comfort with the now. And being present with that is something that doesn't denote a good or bad rating to it. It just is. You see how that works out? But it's by virtue of those experiences that you share with the relationships that you do have that matter not the ones that we have lacked. My dedication to what it is that I'm after in life has taken me on a journey of all sorts. But you know what? Throughout the ups and downs, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. I've enjoyed every minute of it. The relationships that I have had have been amazing for growth, for learning, for expansion, for challenges. Some of the most diverse people from all across the globe because I've been in all sorts of different places. And I'm willing to bet that I'm not alone and that I'm willing to bet that there are some of you who have the exact same thing. But somehow along the lines you have lost faith in this unknown due to all of the flashy stuff that other people present. The relationships, the big house, the nice careers. And it's almost as if you damn yourself. Because of these experiences, because they don't stack up to the sensory elements that a lot of us love to accumulate through our life. Now, it's simply a proposal. It's all in perspective, you see. It's not as though I can tell you how to live your life. Nevertheless, you cannot tell me how to live mine. It is a journey for which we are all after in our own existence and end. No one can direct us for that. And so, if you would like to be at peace with the journey, if you would like to be at peace with the lack of the sensory support that some of us thrive upon, it is best to play the role of the alchemist. To consider utilization of what we do not like in order to move in the direction of what we do like. See, I'm a firm believer that one could only focus 100% of their attention on one thing at a time. If you somehow have the thought in mind of 
out there and here and the relationships there and, and all this stuff that's external to you. Sometimes when those things falter, you step back and you feel as though you're lost or as though everything that you went through was for no reason at all. And I've been there. I've been there. Someone I hold true, do, true to my heart was my father. And you see, he had those experiences. And there were very few people that actually went along that journey with him. There were very few people that trusted in what it is that he shared as his experiences because he didn't, he didn't up it. He didn't make it seem more grandiose than what it needed to be. He simply chased after what was true to his heart and he stuck to his resolve. Regardless of what came his way, he stayed with it. And by virtue of him staying with it, I too was inspired to do the same to thrive and to love my life for myself alone. To be the alchemist and realize the connection of things and that I may not enjoy everything of life, but what I can enjoy is what I directly focus my intentions on. In summary, I suppose it's all an acceptance. I mean, have you ever stopped and thought to yourself, perhaps all those situations that we've went through in life that we've damned so hard are actually essential ingredients meant to be utilized a part of the construction of that mural of sorts. And that the more we are in resistance to those things, the further we become, or the further we are from what it is that we truly wish to become in life. See, life to me is a game of sorts, a bunch of moving pieces. And the more we come to terms with observing and reacting swiftly enough, the better advantage we are. And yet, the harder to grip, the more we lose control. Thus, there's no such thing as true failure. And if there is, there's an art to them.